Hello guys and welcome back to another video of the Kotlin Newbie 2 Pro series. In this video we are going to set up everything we need for coding so we can start in the next video with that. So theoretically we could just use the default Windows editor to put our code in and save it as Kotlin file and then we would need a, what is called a Kotlin compiler. A compiler is basically the translator between our human readable code and the machine code that the computer understands and every time we make any adjustments in our code and want to try it out then we would have to start our command line and compile our code by hand and then we would have to start the program by command line too and that is really annoying so that is why most programmers out there use what is called an IDE that is short for Integrated Development Environment and an IDE is basically a program that makes coding so much easier than doing it at a simple editor because it gives you code suggestions so you know while typing if it is correct what you type it gives you the option to compile your code and run the code by just one click it gives you a package structure that makes it much easier to organize your files and there's a lot of other stuff that is really helpful for programming which comes with an IDE so we are definitely going to use one. If you programmed in Android before then you're probably familiar with Android Studio which is the most used IDE for Android development. If not don't worry we will use another IDE here which is IntelliJ IDEA. Basically IntelliJ IDEA is an IDE mostly used for coding in Java but we can also use it for Kotlin and much other stuff. Um, we could also use it for Android development but I think that Android Studio is much cooler for that so we are just going to use it for our Kotlin series here. And also even though this series isn't about Android development specifically you can apply everything you will learn here to Android development. I put the download link of IntelliJ IDEA in the description so click that link now and we will install it together. So as you can see here IntelliJ IDEA is available in two different versions. One, of, one is the ultimate version and one the community version. The ultimate version is basically the full program with all of its features but we are just going to use the community version because it's free and for most of you including me this is completely fine and you can do whatever you want with that. So next we click on download of the community version and then our program is downloading. So when the download is finished we can open the exe we have to accept that and then the setup dialog opens. So first we click on next here you can choose the destination folder of, of IntelliJ. I'll leave it like that. Click on next. Now you can choose if you want the desktop shortcut. I want this, but you can decide on your own. This is just for using IntelliJ in the console. We don't need that. Also update context menu basically means that you can right click on any folder and directly open this folder as a project with IntelliJ from the right click context menu. I don't use that and also I won't create any associations that basically means you can open any of these files with a double click. So after that we click on next and right now we can just click install. So when the installation is finished we can check the mark here so we can run the program and click on finish. As you can see here, I had a previous installation of IntelliJ, so it wants me to import the old config files. And you will probably only have those two options, config or installation folder, and do not import settings because you probably didn't have a previous installation of it before. So I will go with do not import settings, and that is the same thing you would have to check. Click on OK. Now this is one of the most important decisions in your programming career which is about which theme to choose. 
if you want to be a real programmer, then you should definitely choose the, the dark theme and don't use the light theme that looks shit. <laughs> so next we click on default plugins. Here you can simply leave everything as it is and click on featured plugins. This is also not important for us, so we can click on start using IntelliJ IDEA. After that, this dialog will open and we can click on create a new project and make sure to choose Kotlin on the left and make sure it is Kotlin JVM IDEA. JVM is short for Java Virtual Machine and basically normally you have to consider that not every code runs on every processor architecture and the Java Virtual Machine is basically just the translator between our Java or Kotlin code and our processor. However, you don't have to understand that in detail. Just know that JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine and that Java and Kotlin are platform independent because of that. So we click on next. Here we can choose a name for our project. I'll name it tutorials. Let's say Kotlin tutorials. And below there, we have to specify a project SDK. SDK is short for Software Development Kit. And if you used Android Studio before, you will probably have an entry here, like I do. I have the Java version 10. But if not, don't worry, I will show you how to install it. And if you're asking yourself why we need that project SDK, that is basically there to provide all the functions of Java for us so we can use them in our code. So now you should click the second link in the description to download the JDK that we need here. First of all, you have to know that there are two main versions of the JDK. First is the JDK that, that is from the company Oracle, but we won't use that here because Oracle put it under license. So you can use it for your own coding purposes and education purpose. But once you want to use a program commercially, you have to pay for the license, which we don't want. So there's an alternative version of the JDK, which is the open JDK. You can use that for whatever you want and don't have to pay for anything. So we are going to use that here. Then, as a version, we will choose the OpenJDK 11 LTS, which stands for long-term support. So you can be sure that this version is supported for a long time. And now we click on latest release to download it. So when the download is finished, you simply open the installation package and click on next. You have to read the license or you don't read the license and click on accept and click on next. You can choose a location again. For me, this is fine. So we click on next and on install. So when the installation is finished, we can click on finish here and go back to our new project dialog. Inside here, we have to click on near to choose our just installed JDK. And then you have to choose your path where you install the JDK to. So for me, it, it is adopt open JDK and then JDK version 11.0.5.10. Click on OK. All right, that's it. So now we can click on finish. So when the program started, you will notice a little tip of the day. You can disable these tips if you click on show tips on startup and uncheck it. But if you want to receive all uh, regular tips by IntelliJ for using the program, you can simply leave this check mark and click on close. So if you now look left here, we have our package structure. Basically now this is a folder that is called like we called our project. Inside of that we have a dot idea folder, which is not important for us. Important for us is the SRC folder, which stands for source. So all of our source code belongs in there. And if we click on that, make a right click, we can create a new Kotlin file or class. 
this is what we want to do. This is basically the file we need in which we will put our code to run it. So we click on that. So now we have to choose a name for our file. I'll name it tutorials and I'll leave it on file here. So you will understand what the other things here are when you follow through this tutorial, but for now we want to create an empty file. So we click enter. So now our editor window opens and this is the window where we put all of our code in. So if your program looks exactly like mine, then that's perfect. You set up everything correctly. If not, then please comment below and I will try to help you out with your difficulties and we can try to install your program together. So that's it for this video. I hope you could install it successfully. And in the next video, we will start with coding in Kotlin. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.